Oh, it does go as a baby arm. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Yuck. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with a brand new season of The Boys. We're on to season four now. Whew, I can't believe it. It feels like it's been a while, like it's time, and yet I can't believe it. Last season was crazy, and I think the ending was probably the craziest. The thing that I remember most, of course, is the fact that we no longer have Queen Maeve as a super. She has lost her powers, but she was happy. She wants to go and live her normal life. Uh, Soldier Boy is back on ice for now. And we see that unsurprisingly Homelander is still completely nuts and he no longer wants to listen to anybody. He's doing whatever he wants. He wants to just basically act like a God. He's like, I'm done trying to please people. I'm going to do what I want to do because I feel like I'm strong enough to do that. And what's more is that he's got his son Ryan with him. It was a very rough season for Ryan last season and he is now beside his father. And it looks like he's starting to like this adulation that he's getting by being Homelander's son, which this is very scary because it's a very volatile time for a young man. And outside of that, we uh, found out that, oh, Billy, you foolish, foolish man. You took that temp V to the point where it actually damaged you beyond repair. He's been given a few months to live and basically he's decided to use his final moments doing what he loves to do, which is continue to work on taking out corrupt soups and doing what he can to help the boys out in that last, um, in his last days, I guess. I feel like that's it for now. We, of course, if I watched Gen V, so spoiler alert, if you haven't watched Gen V, hurry up and do that. We also see that Billy was investigating what was going on at the university at the end of Gen V, and because he wants to know what's going on with the super virus that was created to specifically target soups and take them out. So lots of fodder to jump into for this season. Very interested to see if we're gonna get any crossover with this and Gen V. I feel like that's kind of inevitable, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up too high, but I really do hope that is something we get to see. But yeah, enough jibber jabber from me. I'm ready to jump in, so let's do that. But just before I do, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I do a lot of reactions here to all sorts of good stuff. I'd love you to join the fam if you'd like to. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll know when I do uploads of this particular show or anything else you might be watching of mine. So hopefully you will join the fam. All right, that out of the way, let's get into episode one, which is called Department of Dirty Tricks right now. You were a queen, Queen Maeve. Although I keep wondering if it actually is a permanent erasure, but we'll find out this season, I guess. Oh, hey, crazy head popper. How you doing, girl? I keep wondering what her plan is as well, because she's got the virus. I got to think it's backup for Homelander, but it's got to be so much bigger than that, because he's just one soup, a very bad one, but still. This feels a little too uh, too realistic with it <laughs> being an election year. <laughs> sorry, sorry, there's like a million connectors in here and I can't see shit. Thank you, babe. Where the fuck is Butcher? I was like, he's probably sick if I know him very well because, you know, he's dying. I wonder if he told them. Knowing him, he probably didn't. We're here committing a bit of our treason. Oh, well, at least we're being honest. Not for nothing, but Frenchie looks amazing. He looks so fine. I'm loving this hair. Yeah, having a conversation there, buddy? Ah. Oh. <laughs> the music. <laughs> Are you really a superhero if you have to pee? You'd think he'd be beyond that. Is that a pee? And is it a white one? I hope so. That means you're getting old. Thank God. Look at Ryan, he's getting so big. I hope you washed your hands, bro. They're only humans. And toys for our amusement. That's right. We got this. Ew. Ryan, your mom's teaching is in there somewhere. God, please. Just make it explode. Just do it. Homeland is in the building. If you see him, do not engage. I repeat, do not engage with Billy's going to engage. That means you, Butcher. You copy? Oh, bully, oh, Butcher's doing it. Zoe, uh, you, you remember my son? Oh, right. God, let's not match them up. What a great idea. Go for it, sport. Does nobody come back pregnant? Wow! <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're too can bad. they hit puberty? Ryan can spew goo if you Weirdo? Want to. What the fuck are you doing here? Girls get it done in the White House. Hmm? Ha. Huh. 
Ha! No, Butcher Hide. No, 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 Billy. No. This is not going to go well. Ryan is totally team, totally team dad right now. Here's a minute, would you love? Yeah, you, you go. This is, this is not what you need to be around for. What can she do now? I've got a lorry out back. I can get you out of here. He doesn't want to go. I know you're angry. You go. It's what your mum would want. No. Means no, William. This isn't the Neverland Ranch. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think that's going to happen, right? Oh. It seems it already has. Yeah, I knew he was going to smell his sickness right away. Look at that big black mask curdling. I'll miss us. He really will. Bloody hell. You wait to your own voice, don't you? He does. Come on. I do not want to miss Smash Mouth. Seriously? They're still around? Perfect harmony. The world tonight. The liars and the liars. We'll be done in just a minute. Well, that's not awkward. She's not a dummy. What's that? She's a fucking soup. She's a fucking soup. Don't shoot a child. Is that gonna grow back? Oh, it does go as a baby arm. Ew! <laughs> Not this kid literally being a horror movie. Victoria, did you train your daughter to be a psycho? And the sad thing is that the main reason they didn't do anything to her is because she's a child. Ew! <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> She'll survive. Frenchie needs it more than she does. But way to go with the flying! Good job, Starlight! Oh, shit. Let's just pull it. Just, just push her back on. There you go. There you go, baby. Just, just mm. hot. Okay. Woo! Good job, team. He, he still tap it. Like you and me, we were, we were like family. I mean, I don't think it was that deep for her. You're one of my closest friends. I mean, hell, you're dating a soup. If anyone would understand, it would be you, right? Careful, Huey. That part was real. I'm tense. Because I get why Huey's scared of her, but I also need her to stay. If, I really need her to stay a soup. I hurt you. You out me. You out me. I killed everyone you've ever loved. The only thing that makes sense is a truce. Or plan B. She heals really fast. I was that you guys are actually getting worse at your jobs. So bullets don't work. I guess I better get changed. Well, at least now you know it's not gonna work. Oh, that was tense. I honestly thought she might pop Huey's head. I mean, I know she wouldn't because it's, it's actually, I shouldn't say I know, but I had a good feeling she wouldn't because you know, he's a main character. But I need Newman to be stay alive. Like I know they don't understand why yet, but I, I need her to stay alive and stay a soup. We might have to accept the possibility that Newman's invulnerable. She's not, but she's hard to kill, thank God. so focused on killing the VP elect because that's what Singer wants and half of goddamn Langley's on him. Well, you know, Grace, she's always been a bit of a political animal. And what are you focused on? Why are you so interested? You had a clean shot at him, right? The soldier boy. You didn't take it. Was your eye on the ball? <sighs> it's not that simple. Why do I get the feeling we ain't just bumping? Exactly to the point, sir. We need <laughs> someone like you, Billy. Right fucking now. Before the soup start rounding us up and dumping us off in camps. I don't like the sound of this. What's up? Uh, Janine. She got into a fight at school. Hmm. Principal didn't say why, just that she KO'd a boy. Hell yeah! Don't you dare be proud right now. I mean, I'm proud. He's not answering my calls. I don't know where he is. Okay, so... And you're good at finding people. Oh, come on. For your daughter, Marvin. 
Does she not understand that her almost stepfather is a race? Okay. Well, I get what you saw in that guy. He was good to Janine. But we sure as shit wasn't a D. Right? You shouldn't, you walked right into that one, bro. Whenever you see a guy who's definitely mid, who's got himself a baddie, he's got skills. Just know that. But I suppose I need to just relax and realize that she's a child. She, she loved him. He was around unlike, you know, Mother's Milk was. So she developed an attachment. But it just kind of sucks because she doesn't realize how messed up it is that this man is worshipping like an actual tyrant. It's because deep down there's a part of you that is still a little human. Really? <laughs> Star Spangled Pillows? Okay. Your ex Cassandra wrote a tell-all book. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop you right there, Haley. You know, there were no relations with an octopus. There absolutely was! Please tell me the fucking octopus is gone. Yes, actually, she's... It is taken care of. Oh, it'll happen again. What the hell? Wait, what? Sir, after that debacle at the grocery... What? Is this a flashback? Why is Deep here? Or not deep, um, noir. Hold up. I thought he ate a dog. He ate out a dog. It's a big difference. Thank God we don't have to see that. She was with me in Teenage Kicks for like barely a year before they canned her. And what's her power? She's the world's smartest person. She's not smart enough to know when to shut her mouth. He's gonna want her. I am surrounded by sycophants and fucking imbeciles. That's what you want. Low A train. Go over there, pull out Adrian's cock, and blow it. He'd do it. He'll do it. Get up. He's proving his point. The way that she's... <laughs> I'm like, why is she still here? Get off your fucking knees. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Not one of you. As the stomach to challenge anyone. Why should they? Why should they, sir? You're right? Ashley, did you not hear what he just said? That was the time for you to just... I was gonna do it. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. And you were gonna let him. Let's move on. Probably low-key fantasy for both of them. Talk to your father. You're gonna, reg you're gonna regret that. Six months of war. It's not mad. Recycling bin, motherfucker. Period. Oh, <gasps> I got him loose. We're not cutting him loose. We're not cutting him loose. <laughs> Over the recycling? That's a reason. Polarity. Oh, crossover. Well, it's a fine time to fucking will bring that up, isn't it? Oh, the hallucinate. Who is he hallucinating? Think it's his brother? Well, I was thinking that. Uh... You and I could scratch each other's backs. Like when you shot me in the head. Yeah! I think I can handle myself. Oh, you mean that nasty little virus they cooking up at Godolkin? He knows. Now I know about it. And I know it ain't strong enough to kill Homelander. Yeah. You need me. What do you got to offer, Billy? The material Huey has on me from the Red River group home. Stop them from going to the press. Mm, stops them from printing it. You know where to find me. I don't blame Billy in this one. I mean, that whole thing with Ryan is his, maybe it's his wife who's talking to him right now. I was going to say it's his wife's kind of last wish, which he completely screwed up, so. Fuck. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Didn't I tell you to answer yeah. the damn phone? People got to realize, I understand that parents can get on your ass sometimes. And again, I'm not talking about unhealthy family relationships here. I hope he's not faking this, by the way. Because he looks like he's faking it. Okay, he's not. Um, yeah, you got to realize that when your parents start to get older, especially, that mm, you need to make sure you're answering the phone. You don't know what's up. Unfortunately, we know I can tell this even from our first group meeting. Anonymous meetings. Right there in the name. Oops. Yeah, you're not supposed to talk about that. Love my boss, I'm the next chunky. Mm-hmm. Those two used to, I had a feeling y'all used to mess around. 
Don't be a hoe right now, sir. Don't be a hoe, Frenchie. Thank you. Do what you want, but make sure you let Kumiko know what's up. Didn't, did not need to see that. What, why? Why are we seeing this? Is there a reason for this? You're collecting the core. They're white, right? That's why? It's because they're gray? But he's blonde. I don't know. Why am I putting so much effort into this? I am almost never surprised. May I come in? She didn't say yes. She reads a lot. You know, I would have thought the smartest woman on earth would have a nicer place. Smartest person. And that person's too smart to give a fuck about Pottery Barn. Yeah, preach, sister. Speaking oh. of racial qualifiers. Your stylist is dyeing your hair more often. It used to be every month. Now it's every 2.4 weeks. Did she tell you you're going gray? Or is she hiding? It's because she's gray. You got a lot of power, but you do age. Plus, there's that small matter. Your own father almost killed you. <laughs> wow. Please don't kill her, you asked. Pretty ballsy for someone whose power is a party trick. You are welcome to laser me. Period. But I'm guessing you need me in my party trick or something. Because she's the smartest woman on the planet. I need advice. From someone on my level. <laughs> God, I've spent my life scaling the peak of, of five. The scaling? Sir, was. you were inserted at the top. Okay. Save people. They cheer. Fucking kill people. They cheer. I didn't tell you to sit down. Humans are not, they're, they're less than nothing. They're just toys. I like that she's sitting far away. Good girl. Not that it matters. If you crush the masses, who builds your monuments? Exactly. Just gotta nudge them a little. Then you get to swoop in, be the one saving it. Like Caesar. Like Caesar. Statistically, it's inevitable. Please don't kill her. I just don't trust him at all. Especially around people who aren't white. I'd like you to join the seven. No fucking way. Why not? Because I'm not wearing some vaguely racist super suit in front of a bunch of clapping seals. Plus, I'm a black woman who is a thousand times smarter than you. Your ego can't handle it. I mean, really listen to you. You can stay here, reeking of Taco Bell and loneliness. Wow. Hurtful, but true. You can put some of your theories into practice on a global scale. She's smart, but she's got ego. The thing is, Homelander actually does like people who stand up to him and stand on business. He, he called me right before it happened. And pick uh, up? I didn't pick up. I mean, maybe I could have seen it coming. I could I could have. Uh, I mean, you couldn't have stopped it, but. I hope the old man pulls through. Oh, wow, he really is dying. Poor Butcher. He wishes he had a dad that he would be sad about losing. You stole! I should have known. I forgot about the terms. Uh, but, uh, like I said, I, I, I get why he's doing it. I do. Don't agree, but I get it, because there's no way they would tell him that getting... Or maybe, I don't know, maybe Huey of all people would have understood. But I guess we'll never find out. So what does the CIA think of you wasting their vast resources all to hunt down their phone of Todd? I didn't ask. He will do whatever he has to to get back with his ex. That's all you need to know, okay? Hmm. 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 No, it really isn't, Frenchie. It's not. Okay. All right, there we go. Clear. Have fun. I don't know, from last season, I had a feeling. I thought that maybe they were moving that direction, but that's cool. She wonders uh, how a man such as this win the love of a woman like Monique, you know? Oh, he's, uh, he's nice to my daughter. Come on, there's only one reason. Todd must be picking some serious... <laughs> Some serious Pete Davidson energy. Right, make it make sense. Hi, fellas. Thanks for making it on such short notice. He's here, right? Like in the building here? This is the best day of my life. What is she up to? 
good to see you again. What the fuck are you doing here? Homelander's tired of being surrounded by morons. He did tell you that directly. Others turn their backs. I just wanted to personally say thank you for your devotion and your sacrifice. Wow, they would literally get on their knees for you right now. I want you to take these bats and beat these gentlemen to death. <laughs> you funny. <laughs> Oh, it's like one of your tests. He you wants to say no. No. I don't understand what's going with Noir. I think maybe we should go. I think it's too late. Go, oh, Jesus! Mm -hmm. I don't even feel bad. Jesus! You ran through someone, bro. Whew, Noir saved your ass. Yo, what the fuck? That was so fucked up, you guys. Oh, they just put somebody else in the suit. Okay. He should be at this trial, no? Well, I mean, he can be there in 0. 0.2 seconds. Jurors are seated. Any second. Sis, you were on the wrong side of history. But I understand she's just... when uh, This is what happens with people who are super smart. What are you guys actually trying to accomplish right now? Okay, mama's milk. No, yeah, I'm okay. 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 Whoa. Okay, bro. Can he like can we assess for like head trauma? <laughs> like. Oh, I hate that man, but he did ate, eat on that decision. He ate on getting the smartest girl. As soon as I saw it on the screen, I knew he'd pick her. Everyone remain calm. We're all very special people. Say it like you mean it, bro. Come on. <laughs> I know, now you gotta pretend like you're actually sad. <laughs> My sister, my sister. I want to root for you, but this is not the way. This is not the way. Good. You've got that evidence. Hold on to it for now. Oh, God, whose breast milk did you steal, you freak? We have to share everything with each other. We really don't. Nope. We should have boundaries. Big, solid, distant boundaries. Whatever it is, it's okay. It's okay. It's not. I don't want Butcher to die. Yeah, anything, huh? Keep twitching. And all those things he said about you. He said awful, awful things about you. Just horrible. My mom loved him. Exactly. How did you forget that? I was right. You have never loved anyone. Hmm. He could vanish under the waves forever. Is the octopus talking to you? Baby, look at me. No, 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 no. I, now that it's talking, it's so much worse. Oh, that's so wrong on so many levels. Damn, that escalated quickly. But I guess it didn't since y'all have been together before. Though I don't think it's good for two recovering addicts to be together, though. Not in the beginnings, you know? They even say that it's best to, like, not. I really hope you can hear me. I think you can. For what it's worth, I think he can. Who's this? Mom. Oh. Just hit me. It'd be his mom. We didn't know what happened to his mom. Oh, she would probably be on his contacts. He promised me he would take care of Ryan. His wife. I was right. That's who he's seeing. Hey, okay. What you think I'm trying to do here? I thought brother of the wife. Ryan becomes like Homelander. That's the end of the world. You have to find a better way. What the hell do you want from me, Becca? What do you want from yourself, Billy, since this is a hallucination? Do you really want to go out of your life? That man died a long time ago. Feeling like it sucked the entire time? It's too late. I'm out of time. Hmm. Come on, use that big brain, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> 
Now you can never forget that. Well, I hope you're happy now. She's not there. Good for you, Billy. One better decision at a time. That's all we can ask for. You know, it'd probably help you not to die as fast, though, is just cutting back on the alcohol. Mind you, you might have a constant headache, so. It's not all of it. Of course it is. They don't do ending scenes in this show. Okay, guys. Well, that was a solid intro into our next season. And, uh... Yeah, things are a right mess. Things are a right mess. I think the things that scare me of the most about this particular situation is the introduction of Sage with someone like Homelander. You know, the man is not a genius. He's not a dummy though. Like in fairness, he's not just a complete jock. He's a, he does have some intelligence, but he doesn't have the layers and the levels per se, right? He he doesn't have what it takes to go up against people like Edgar, right? Which is why Edgar sunned him so much back in the day. But really, he was smart enough finally now to figure out that instead of trying to pretend that he can, that that's who he is, he found somebody who could outthink him. And again, I don't think Sage realizes she's dealing with a, well, she, maybe she does, but maybe she thinks she can control him. And that's where I feel, I just don't think it's gonna work out for her is my point. And it saddens me because listen, a black woman being the smartest woman on the, like, on the planet, please, yes. But still, you know, I think she doesn't really understand just how completely volatile Homelander is. Like all the brains in the world cannot account for mental illness. So anyway, um, I am a little scared about the, the fact that she's there, right? As I said, Homelander would absolutely implode within six months, although, Actually, we're gonna get to the aging thing in a minute. Um, he would definitely impl uh, implode on his own, but now that he's been smart enough to recruit somebody with the brain power to think at the levels that he never will be able to, this is very scary. It's very, very scary because she can run circles mentally around all these people that are trying to take him down as well. But I feel like she's got her own reasons. Honestly, I don't think this is just for her to be able to run out her scenarios as Homelander said. That's definitely a perk, but I can't think that if she's taking this opportunity, she's just doing it to be Homelander's puppet. There's definitely something in it for her or, or something that she believes is in there. Maybe she's thinking of taking over herself, who knows? But anyway, I'm not against that, by the way. If her plan is to somehow usurp Homelander and do something, then you know what? I'm almost for it, but anti-ways, anti-ways. So that part's kind of scary. And we see that Homelander is struggling. Uh, as I was mentioning before, he's aging. I mean, I think that's pretty clear to see. Like he's not frozen as some 20 something. And you know, I kind of liked, I've always liked the fact that Homelander's actor is an older guy that he, you know, looks to be a man who's in his 30s, 40s, you know, that age group. Because so many times with these superhero shows, they're always very young. And I don't think I would take Homelander as seriously, to be perfectly honest, if he looked like a 20-something. And it's not to say that 20-somethings can't be very powerful and scary. It's just, I think that sageness, that look to him, really actually adds to kind of the overall just fearsomeness that he has as far as his instability. But anyways, we're seeing that this man is collecting all of his, uh, his pubic hairs because they are turning white on him. And I don't know how old Homelander's supposed to be. I believe, I don't know if they've told us, uh, for, for those, please let me know in the, in the, in the comments. I think he's supposed to be in his sixties or seventies, somewhere in there. Like he's not aging as fast as the average human. I know that, but he is still aging. And that's something that is new though, because if we look at Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy, for the most part, didn't age, right? He still looks like he did. What, is he over 100 years old? Something close like that. So there's something that obviously changed in Homelander's recipe, but he is aging. That is the thing. He's aging and the certain things around aging he's experiencing, such as the graying of the hair. And I absolutely love the way that Sage completely read him for filth. <laughs> when he asked for proof, like he had the audacity to ask. And then she's like, okay, you be dyeing your hair more often. You know, your prostate be enlarged. And you know, I'm just saying, you start to look a little crotchety. That's all I'm saying is you look a crotchety, son. But <laughs> honestly, I think the whole thing with the aging is, well, three main things. One, he's vain. We know that. Like he's extraordinarily vain, but... That's the environment he was brought up in, told his entire life that he's perfect and he should be vain. So he's just exemplifying that. Two, there is a persona. There's a way that he kind of views himself and getting old is not part of it, right? Like the youthful, there's a lot that's, that's associated with youth, like power and vigor. And also let's face it, 
people who will adore him, you know, his female fans. We all know that he is definitely a, a promiscuous man. And, you know, people, you know, no matter how powerful you are, if you're not as cute anymore, you, you, your options are definitely going to get limited. So I think it's very much like a look and aesthetic that he thought he was going to have indefinitely. And that's shifting. It's changing. It's something that he's not used to and he doesn't want because sadly in our society, we don't necessarily associate the best of things with age. So I think he's thinking about that. And then thirdly, and probably the most important is that it's a reminder of mortality for him. He is invulnerable to just about anything, but he cannot stop aging. They, they weren't able to stop that for him. He is getting older, which means most likely that inevitably at some point his powers might diminish. I don't know for certain. I've not read the source material. Maybe he doesn't get any weaker. I don't think he's like a Viltrumite that gets stronger with age. I'm thinking it's probably the opposite. Like if he's peeing more and he's getting in a large prostate, these are health issues, right? These are things that for people who have them, if they progress, it, it doesn't, it's not a good thing. It's, it's not an improvement. So... I'm thinking that it's a reminder for him that, oh my God, like, I'm not gonna live forever. Like, my time is limited. And I don't think he's ever really thought about that before, but now it's hitting him. And it probably wouldn't bother him as much, except for the fact that he feels completely and utterly unfulfilled. And that's the other thing that we saw Sage picked up on immediately, because he's like, yeah, like, I kill people, they cheer. I save them, they cheer. Like, I'm surrounded by sycophants who do whatever I want them to do and never speak, stand up to me or speak to me. Right, which is hilarious because we saw last season, was it, when he completely dressed everybody down to getting poor Ashley to whip off her wig and everything? Like, sir, you're the one who instilled fear into everybody, and now you're mad because they're scared at you, scared of you. But he's saying that he's feeling like there's nothing, like he feels like there's no level of enjoyment, nothing is bringing him joy, nothing is giving him satisfaction anymore. And now he has this son, which he thought was going to make him happy to be a father, but that's clearly not doing it for him either. And he's like, I don't have anything to leave him. I don't have a legacy that I'm proud of. Like, I feel like I should burn everything down. But at the same time, I don't know if that's going to make me happy. So it's that existential crisis, as Sage called it. It's really hitting him because, as I said, he knows he's not going to be around forever. But he also doesn't feel like he's lived the life worth living. And that's the scariest. People who are scared to die, really scared, is typically because they feel like they have not lived the best life they could. They feel like there's going to be a lot of regrets if they go right now or go soon. Her basically saying that, you know, if she, if he really wants to do this whole reset of the world, then she's like, you can't wipe, she's like, you can't wipe everybody out. Like you take out all the humans, there's going to be no one to give you veneration. And we all know that he absolutely needs veneration. He cannot survive without people fluffing his ego. And again, not really his fault. He was raised in that environment. He was literally raised to be this symbol and to be adulated from people. So he doesn't know how to live without that. But as she's saying, like, if you want these people to kind of universally accept you, then you need to be their savior. You need to let them completely devolve into chaos. And when there's literally no hope left in what they have, you swoop in like the beacon of light. And then they're going to look at you like a god. And then you're going to have what you think you want, which is a world of people who worship you. And you're going to feel like, you know, that, that you've accomplished something, like you've gotten a legacy for your son, which again, if you knew anything about Ryan, he would know that that's not what Ryan would enjoy at all. But we'll come back to Ryan in a minute. But uh, yeah, an interesting look into Homelander's head and kind of where he's going with this as far as like that. And then the nightmares he's been having as well. Interestingly, I would think that he would like, I'm not surprised that Edgar's words are cycling in his head. I knew from the south, oh my God, I miss Edgar so much. <laughs> But from that scene where him and Edgar were facing off and Edgar literally dressed him down and not even like I'm insulting you like at a superficial level, Edgar went for his soul. Like he was like, bro, I know exactly what's wrong with you and I'm going to poke every last button and wound you have in that conversation. So I really loved that they brought back the line he said about you're not a hero, you're just bad product. Like, and that was like, Honestly, even like I stand Edgar, but that was low. I mean, even even though I cannot stand Homelander, that was low. Cause like, bro, you created him. He didn't ask to be a product, okay? Y'all raised him like this. Y'all turned him into this monster for the most part. And then you turn around and tell him basically it's his fault. Like, oh yeah, you're just a bad product. Like, ah. So yeah, that would be a core slicing thing. Cause Edgar is kind of the closest thing that he's got to a dad, to be real, right? So anyway, between that and of course his own father, 
basically rejecting him saying that he's nothing and trying to kill him. I, I just thought that was interesting that those were memories, but they make sense to me. But then what really surprised me was that he has the memory of all the people he's taken out. Like not like obviously the, the, the nobodies, but like Madeline, like just um, seeing, um, what's her name, Stormfront. Like people who he either cared for or felt like he could trust to some degree, their deaths are still haunting him. Right. And again, I, I'm not surprised at that because a lot of that, even Madeline, he didn't want to kill Madeline. That was just a temper tantrum. But he cared about her and he thought she cared about him. And everybody in his life that he has been around thus far that he thought he could love or trust, he found out that they were using him in some way. So again, you know, Homelander is a very complex and interesting character in that in, in one sense, you can understand why he's like this and it is pitiable and you can feel some empathy towards the situation, but he's such an ass. He is such a putrid person in other ways that it's kind of like, you also gotta go, bro. <laughs> like, I'm sorry you ended up like this, but you gotta go, bro. And so anyways, uh, I thought that was very interesting that he's being plagued by those nightmares. He's being plagued by this mortality that he's experiencing. That face-off he had with Billy where he's quickly obviously looked right through his head and saw that he's dying and he was like yeah I'm sad I'm actually gonna miss you I'm like he's not lying like he really does like Billy because Billy stands up to him Billy has never been scared of the fact that he had the power to rip his heart his heart out of his chest and Homelander wants that more than anything I think that's so funny that again coming back to that boardroom scene with the deep and and um a train and everybody that when he's like I'm surrounded by yes people and sycophants like he of course said last season that he wants everyone to shut up and fear him, but that's not what he truly wants. He wants to be treated like a person, not like a freak, not like a product. And he realizes that when everybody just acts afraid of him and does whatever he wants, they're not seeing him as a person. They're not respecting him as an equal. They're looking at him as this freak who's othered. And that's what Billy gives him. Billy has never given a damn about the fact that he's a soup and he loves that. He'll never admit it, but he absolutely loves it and craves it. Madeline was never scared of him being a super, that he loved it. Edgar never was scared of the fact that he was a soup and like he respected it and he liked it, he craved it. So it's sad because he doesn't recognize that that's the reason why he craves it, but you know, that's what he really likes. And there's so few people like that in his life. So I know he'll genuinely miss Billy when he goes and it, that's why he won't take him out like he could. But again, he would take no joy in that even if he didn't actually have a special place in his heart for Billy. But anyway, that's kind of Homelander right now. He's definitely working to give himself a rebrand globally, uh, I guess, until he can figure out a way to make everybody fall at his feet. And then we see that he's kind of still struggling to connect with Ryan, but we're not surprised because he doesn't have any idea how to connect with anyone. First of all, by dragging Ryan into these different like political and these public things, like Ryan is not about it really. Like this kid grew up in isolation, first of all, for the first like 13 years of his life. And two, he's just a chill kid. Like he'd rather be at home making stop and stop motion animation with Lego. Like that's what he wants to do. But it's so sad that we know he's here because he was hurt by Butcher and he feels like he's got nowhere else to go. But realistically, he just, he realizes like he can't be himself around his dad. He sees the way Homelander is and Ryan's not a dummy. Like I think he's figured out that his dad's effectively a bully and that he's not that bright. And so like he can't talk, he can't sit down and talk to Homelander about how much he loves Lego or any of the other nerdy stuff. I think last season he was saying he liked math and stuff. He couldn't say that kind of stuff to Homelander. Homelander would completely make fun of him for it or just talk down to him like he likes to do. So Ryan is stuck in yet another place he doesn't want to be feeling like he can't be himself, which is super sad. But anyways, speaking of Ryan, we see that he, he and Butcher have their first interface since the last time they saw in, in the, the last season. And Butcher basically is like, look, I just want to get you away from Homelander. You don't have to talk to me. Like you, you have every right to be mad, but let me just get you away. And we see that I think he wanted, he agreed to talk to him, first of all, like he didn't have to. So I do think that the initial anger is subsiding for Ryan and he really does want to talk to Butcher because he does care about Butcher and he should because Butcher did care about him, messed up as it was. And we see that once he discovers through his dad that Butcher is dying, the look on his face is all he needed to see. I'm like, oh, thank God. I mean, I didn't really think Ryan was completely gone yet, by the way. I was just really disappointed last season when he was smiling at seeing a man get his head lasered off. But, um, you know, as soon as I saw his face, like, he's not ready to lose somebody else that he cares about. Like, if this is 
the timelines are a bit fuzzy in this show, but I think it's been just barely a year since his mom passed, right? So it's it's fresh. And Billy was the first person he bonded with after his mom died. So he's not ready to lose somebody else. Not like this, not so quickly. And I love that he was honest with, you know, with Homelander when he's like, I don't want him to die. Like, I'm, I'm not okay with that. And understandably, Homelander was an ass about it, but I don't think that's gonna leave him. And that's a good thing. I think that that's gonna set Ryan on a trajectory of being open to peeling away from Homelander. As I said, he was already, I think he's already kind of getting there, seeing that now that he's spending real time with him, he's realizing how different he is from him. But yeah, I think the fact, like he said, my mom loved him. And also like, I don't think he wants to say it, but he loved Billy too. Like they, Billy was actually getting kind of soft with him before he turned into an idiot again. So there is a bond there. And that is, that is someone who's so much better for him overall than Homelander will ever be. But we'll have to see how that na Ryan navigates that because his dad be crazy like that. But that's kind of all the Homelander stuff. Outside of that with Team Boys, there was a uh, less development. Starlight getting a handle on some flying, which is pretty cool. She definitely needs to keep working on it though because it's a bit shaky, but we love a girl who's leveling up. Uh, we see that Frenchie and Kumiko, I really thought they were maybe going towards something romantic, especially after her weird like dream sequence from last season. But she says it's never gonna happen. So I respect it. If she's like, nah, bro, I wanna keep this friendly. I respect that. She's like, you go do you. So it looks like my man is moving now on to uh, one of his, uh, what would we call it? I guess a friend, but someone that he met at one of his, I'm assuming it's like a narcotics or an alcoholics and on this, one or the other. But anyways, I have to go back. I'm not sure what that picture meant that Frenchie looked at. I'm very curious as to why he felt the need to look at it and then put the picture down. So we'll have to see, but I also am surprised about this whole thing with him and Kumiko because I really thought that they were making progress because didn't she kiss him? I'm, I'm fuzzy now, but anyways, I'm sure there's a reason why the never gonna happen happened. So like I said, I respect it. I love their, their relationship regardless. So there's that. Uh, there was the attack on my girl, Newman. Thankfully it did not work. And as I said, I'm thankful it didn't work because of course now because of Gen V, I am more team Newman. Like if you, if, if Gen V had not happened and we had not seen what we saw there, I'd be like, yeah, get her. But I understand a bit more of what she's doing and I, I need her to stay alive right now for my girl Marie. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to unfortunately root against the boys on this when they need to leave her alone. But um, her daughter, terrifying. That mutation, terrifying. And the fact that, actually I have to say, she looks shocked. I don't think that um, Victoria realizes that her daughter's that out of control. I don't think so. Uh, Cause she looks shocked when Huey said she just killed two people. So we ain't got a chance to go and get into it, but I'm thinking if no other reason that she's she needs her daughter to like pipe down because she's supposed to be running for, you know, she's her, She's in the running to be in the, in the White House. So she cannot have people finding out that her daughter's eating faces, quite literally. So anyway, uh, there's that and uh, how she's going to fix that or how she's going to handle that. God knows. And what else did we have? Um, yeah, Huey and his dad. Not much to say about that. Super sad, but hopefully, you know, he pulls through this. I said in the episode, just, you know, life lesson there. People... You never know how long you have with your parents. You never have long, how long you have with your loved ones. It's connection. It's about that, that interchange of energy. It's about just talking to them and letting them know that you care. And you just never know. And like you're seeing, Huey's now feeling that regret. Like he's like, I could have given him five minutes, right? I could have picked up the phone and just said, hey. And then, you know, had, gave him five minutes and been like, yeah, I got to go. Like, you just never know is the point. It's a sad thought, but we never know when our last conversation is going to be with somebody. So you know, make them count. But yeah, that's sad. Hopefully they get out of that. Outside of that, A-Train looks like he's definitely ready to bounce. Like I think the first opportunity he feels like is legitimate that he can break free of Homelander. He's going to do it. Uh, some beef between him and Sage, but I'm wondering if that might go somewhere. I wouldn't be against it. That could be interesting. I think that's it. I think those are the main things I wanted to kind of talk about really. Um, Billy, yeah, dealing with his conscience, you know, he's obviously hallucinating. It was just probably because of the tumor. And I was saying that it's probably either his brother or his wife that he'd be seeing because those are two, like the two major things in his life that really shifted his whole trajectory. And it's his wife. And yeah, like I get why he was thinking about screwing Huey over because like he's thinking like, this is my wife's final request and I screwed it up. So maybe I do this and I won't have to live so long without the, with the consequences, right? But thankfully his conscience is coming through in the, in the vision of his wife and saying like, Mm, is this really the only way, AKA, is this really the way you wanna go out? 
you know, this is your last few months on earth. You want to go out with your friends thinking you're an a-hole, right? And we all know that Huey for Billy has a special place in his heart. So I'm glad that he's like, I can find another way. And I believe it. Like Billy has actually got an amazing ability to think outside the box when it comes to these soups. And so he just has to get more creative. Absolutely. But as I said, I'm kind of rooting against him where Newman's concerned because I need her to be okay. But yeah, I think those are the main, those are the main points. Yeah, outside of a little bit of mother's milk, not much to talk about there. So I have a sneaking suspicion this is not going to end well for MM and his mom and her mom. I think she's going to continue to lash out because she's probably going to blame what happened on the situation. Like maybe she's going to feel like if they hadn't pushed him out, that this wouldn't have happened. But anyways, hopefully they'll be able to reel her back in slowly. And as she gets older, she'll, she'll understand that it was for the best that he left. But anyways, I think that was it. It was a packed, loaded first episode, but I enjoyed it. Like I said, setting the pace here. Uh, not sure where we're going to go. I'm not sure we're going to go. But my biggest fear right now is that Homelander having that smart woman under his wing that is terrifying. But like I said, I'm hoping that she's got some ulterior motives going on and I'm curious to find out what those are. So yeah, I enjoyed this episode a lot, guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.